NCAA has reached more state tournaments than Stillwater, but tonight they will be trying to reach their first section final since their last state tournament appearance back in 1989. The Mustangs last year had three straight appearances in the, in the section final snap when they lost in the semis to Anoka. They'll be trying to get back there tonight. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony Lopata and welcome to Coon Rapids High School for tonight's section 4AA semifinal matchup between the Mustangs and the Ponies. Along with me tonight is Mark Karonsky and Mark, tonight we get a third meeting between these teams and the first two drastically different. Mustangs won the first one by 22, but then in the rematch, the Ponies bit them and cost them a share of the conference title. On the second game, uh, Mounds, you had Pete Sulak down with an injury. Jeff Jacobs was hurt, and they got him. I don't think Mounds, you expect them to come out as hard after the 22-point win, and, and they just played a better ball game and won it. The Ponies crashed the boards hard that night. They out-rebounded the Mustangs 36-23, including 17 offensive rebounds. If they can put up numbers like that tonight, Mounds, you may be in trouble. They sure will. Uh, the rebounding is a lot, it's all mental, and if you can hit the boards, you're gonna win a lot of games. And Stillwater, Mountie doesn't get out rebounded too often, so Stillwater might have to look at the game tape and see what worked and try it again. The Mustangs come into this one with a record of 20 and three. They've steamrolled their competition most of the season, but the one thing they had problems with was the physical play of the Ponies. If they can turn this into a war tonight, this game could get interesting. Well, it depends on how the refs are gonna let them play. If they let it go, could be in Stillwater's favor, and they might have the advantage. Part of letting it go also means no foul trouble, and it means you don't have to go as deep in your bench. That also favors Moundsview. It sure does. Stillwater has two main scores, and they just picked up two along the way this season. Moundsview's got a pretty deep bench, and Moundsview's definitely got the advantage on the, on the bench. One of the key bench players for the Mustangs is coach's son, Michael Calls. He likes to see the big red. He's hit three threes in each of the two meetings. Mike's a great shooter, and you can't let him get off early because he's tough to stop if he gets off early. The Ponies pulled off a minor upset in the quarterfinals. They beat the number four seed Anoka, but they beat the two-time defending section champions along the way. It's funny, though, when you talk about this Pony team, you start talking about a lot of the same characteristics that those Anoka teams had the last two seasons. Disciplined, good defense, physical, good rebounding, and very disciplined in their half-court set. Everybody knows what shot is theirs, and they know when to take it. Well, knowing your role is a big part of this game, and still out of coaching staff's really got this team knowing their roles and knowing what to do. It's the birth of the section finals on the line. Stay with us when we come back to Coon Rapids for the starting lineups and tonight's opening tap. This is section four AA basketball on KABL. Back in Coon Rapids in a moment. Potential energy will immediately turn into It takes a high school student months of dedication and study to earn this recognition. And it takes many weeks of effort and determination to achieve this distinction. But the most enduring certificate of them all can be earned in one night. Drinking and driving is a fast way to write off a lifetime. Don't drink and drive. Section 4 AA semifinals from Coon Rapids. The Mustangs and the Ponies. The Ponies have been riding high since their upset win against Moundsview. Have lost just one other game since that time. The Mustangs come in at 20 and three. And right now let's turn it over to the public address announcer, Steve Oleen. At guard for the Ponies, number 34, Kevin Syme. And at guard for the Mustangs, number 23, Sean Bagan. At forward for the Ponies, number 40, Sean Welch. And at forward for the Mustangs, number 30, Jeff Jacobs. At forward for the Ponies, number 44, Nate Danielson. And at forward for the Mustangs, number 32, Peter Sulak. At center for the Ponies, number 50, Brett Bartke. 
And a guard for the Mustangs, number 35, Eric Fritsch. At guard for the Ponies, number 54, Ken Reimer. And at center for the Mustangs, number 53, Chad Bay. Head coach for the Ponies is Dwayne Mushler, assisted by Mike Mustler and Mark Larson. Head po coach for the Mustangs is Ziggy Cowles, assisted by Dave Lezer. Coming into tonight's game, the Ponies have a record of 13-11, and the Moundsview Mustangs are 20-3. There you have the starting lineups for tonight's game. And Mark, that brings up a couple of very interesting matchups. The Ponies will probably try and bang with Chad Bay inside a little bit, put the body on him, and they may do that with Brett Bartke, a six foot four center. Well, they're probably gonna have to try a lot of people on Bay tonight. He's been just playing outstanding all season long and he could wear out a couple of them if he's having a nice night. One of the other keys will be the way the Ponies are able to handle the Mustangs' backcourt pressure. There really isn't a true point guard on this Pony roster. Nate Danielson will do the bulk of the ball handling along with Kevin Syme. Mustangs may be able to cause some turnovers on those matchups. Well, Monzi's defense has been their strong suit this season. They've been playing excellent defense. You're going to have to keep the ball in Danielson and Syme's hands all night long. Those are the guys that got you to this point. They're probably going to see most of the action. John Welch will jump center against Chad Bay and will be underway with the semifinal game. The tap controlled by the Ponies. Kevin Syme watched by Bagan. Eric Furch opens on Danielson. Mark Key outside the arc. Bay's nowhere near him. Reimer's jumper's no good. A rebound Bay. But the Mustangs turn it over and give it right back. It's a nice rebound by Bay, got it out to Bagan, and Bagan overshot Furch. Bonds appears like they want to run tonight. Just getting started, Syme, left-handed drive, dishes to Bartke, Bartke finishes. Brett Bartke. Appeared that Bagan just let Syme down the lane, can't let him do that. Jacobs, Furch, Here's Sulak. Bagan guarded by Reimer. Furch drives by Syme, missed the layup, rebound Bartke. Ponies with the ball in the early lead. Reimer outside the arc. Bartke again, Chad Bay will give him all kinds of room outside. Danielson, jumper over Furch is no good, rebound Bay. We've played nearly a minute and a half. Mustangs still looking for their first point. Very patient half court style game that would really seem to favor the Ponies. Jacobs gets a pick from Bay. Stillwater switching every pick out there. Bonzi might be able to exploit some mismatches if they can get a smaller guy on Bay. Furch uses Bay's pick and a foul called against Bartke. Furch didn't throw it up, so unlikely that we'll have any free throws awarded here. Mustangs will inbound to the baseline. Balls on Bartke, that's his first personal team's first ball. Bagan finds Furch for three over Welch. That's no good. Offensive rebound, Sulak, but he missed it. And give it to the Ponies. Bartke appeared to touch it last. Jacobs must have gotten a hand in there. Boy, Sulak's not gonna see an easier layup than that all season. Appeared to lose it on his way up. 5.45 remaining in the quarter. Tip by Jacobs. Ponies will keep it. Stillwater leads early, 2-0. Mustangs have missed their first three shots. Ponies have hit one of three. Reimer stops and fires from eight feet. Can't get the roll. Rebound Chad Bay. Here comes Monzi. They're pushing it up now. They'd like to force the tempo. They don't want to play the Ponies in a half-court game. 
Bay from 17, gets his own rebound, puts it up and in, and draws the foul. Bay's basket is good. That was just a great effort by Chad Bay as he chased down his own rebound and then drew the foul. Watch it again. Here's the initial shot. Gets his own rebound, gets the contact, and finishes the play. Free throw is good. There was a lane violation against Ken Reimer. Bay gets the three-point play, and the Mustangs lead 3-2. Took them two and a half minutes to score. Ponies break the press. Syme behind the back, then has it poked away by Bagan. Bagan for Bay. That's what you see, what Monzi wants to do right there is push the ball up, take advantage of Stillwater in the open court. And they're showing early they can force these ponies into some mistakes. Welch went to fire, had it tipped. Reimer with the rebound. Ken Reimer. Into traffic. Offensive foul against Derek Furch. You saw a lot of saw a lot of what Stillwater's game plan is tonight there on the last oh, offensive first rebound. First first saw Reimer go right first. after it, knock a few people around. Picked it up, got it to go. It appears the rest are going to let him play a little bit. Danielson into the front court. Syme on the baseline. He'll fire for three, in and out. Chad Bay with another rebound. He has five already. Bagan dishes to Furch, who spins and finishes. Very good. Mustangs on top by three. Danielson, nice feed to Bartke. Both teams seem to loosen up here. The game's gotten into a faster pace. Jacobs for three. Syme with the rebound. Past the halfway point, first period. Mustangs seven, Ponies six. Bartke from 15, they'll give him that shot. Jacobs with a rebound. Bagan for a long three. Bagan for three. Moundsview by four. Danielson to Welch. Danielson for three. Sulak with a rebound. Mustangs doing a great job on the defensive boards. The Ponies have just one offensive rebound. Bay works the baseline and Welch clears the board. Stillwater might want to slow it down a little bit, the pace favoring the Mustangs. Syme, 15-footer is good. That was a great play by Syme. He just took a couple dribbles with his left hand, pulled up at the free throw line and knocked it down. Syme's easily the most athletic of the ponies. Maybe the most difficult matchup for the Mustangs. Substitutions ready for both teams. Haven't had many whistles here. Bay over Bartke. Missed it. Rebound last touch by Sulak. And now Mark Drummerhausen checks in for the Ponies. Michael Calls and Thad Olson for Moundsview. Now in the game for Stillwater, Mark Drummerhausen. Chad Bay out of the blocks, two out of five. Keep an eye on his field goal percentage. That's going to be a key statistic tonight. He struggled against the Ponies in the one-point loss at Stillwater. Welch lost it on the way up. Sulak tips it, but the Ponies will keep it. Chad's been an animal on the board so far in this first quarter. Five rebounds. He's really going to be a key. If they are going to dominate the defensive glass, it's going to be because of Chad Bay. And freshman Mike Darrington checks in for Stillwater. Welch. Well, that was a big time shot by Welch. A fadeaway. 
Saw Sean Welch on one of the best shooting nights you'll ever see. 12 out of 16 in a win against Irondale in which he didn't miss in the second half. He's a dangerous shooter out of that flex. Appears to be shooting with a lot of confidence. He looks for the shot, too, just about every time he touches the ball out there just outside the free throw line. He'll be looking to put it up. Both teams digging into their bench a little bit here. Late first period. Big stretch for Stillwater. If they can prove that their bench can even play the opponent or the Mustang bench to a draw, they're going to be in business tonight. Stillwater playing very tough defense. Bagging with a long three that's no good. Rebound to Stillwater. We're tied at 10 with 1.18 remaining in the first period. Syme to Darrington. Welch to Drummerhausen, but he missed it. Reimer with the offensive rebound. Reimer with another offensive rebound and the bucket. And he's pumped up, point to the crowd. Foul on the drive against Stillwater. Third foul against the Ponies. Chad Bay, Eric Furch return for the Mustangs. Ponies on top, 12-10. And the overrated chance starts early from the Stillwater fans. It's a lot of intensity in this gym right now. You can definitely feel that from both players and fans. Ponies were beaten right here on this floor in the semifinals last year on one of the most bizarre finishes you'll ever see. The game ended. They put time back on the clock, brought the teams out of the locker rooms and gave them another shot in overtime against White Bear Lake. Darrington missed it, Bay with another rebound. See if Mounds, wants to hold it for one. 20 seconds left. Birch watched by Reimer. <laughs> 15 seconds to go. Mustangs trying to tie it up before the first break. Birch spins into the lane, kicks it out for calls. A long three is no good. And Thad Olson comes over the back on the rebound and will be called for the foul. First against Thad, second against the Mustangs. Ponies get the last crack. And the first quarter comes to a close. Stillwater on top, 12-10 after one. Section 4AA semifinal basketball returns to Coon Rapids in a moment. Do you know this dog? He's Benji the Hunted. Whereabouts? The forest primeval. Proceed with caution. He's known to be cute and cuddly and is reportedly leading a band of juvenile mountain lions to fun and high adventure. So be on the lookout for the most wanted dog in the forest. Benji the Hunted. Remember, you can only see it if you watch. It's only on the Disney Channel. Dwayne Mushler's crew on top by two at the end of one. Ponies 12, Mustangs 10. First quarter, the Mustangs shoot just four of 14 from the field, 28.6%. The Ponies hit six of 13 inside the arc, six of 15 overall. Nelson fires from 18 feet, and it's good. It's a big bucket for Nelson. Mike Nelson. They look for him to do some of that. Shooting from 15 foot range. Hitting his first shot of the game is always a plus. Welch misses the long jump shot. Nelson with a rebound. Nice job to save it. Furch drives down the lane and hits the left handed layup. Tremendous hesitation move. Hesitated on his dribble just a, just a split second. Got Welch just standing there. He's so strong with his left hand when he goes to the hoop. Mustangs definitely try to force the ponies to go to their left. 
Danielson nails a three, ponies by one. Birch for calls, it was tipped on the way. Olsen passes up the short jumper. Be tough defense. Calls for three. It's a big bucket for calls, like we said in the pregame. If he gets started early, it could be dangerous the whole game. Well for three. Mustangs have hit three in a row to start the second quarter, and they're on top 17-15. Welch hit it again. Sean Welch. He missed his last one. He thought he might shy away a little bit. No hesitation there. Calls with a long three. When he's on, it doesn't matter how far away he is, Mark. A good look means a good shot. Danielson missed it. Furch with a rebound. Furch on the run. Layup is good. Bonzi's starting to turn it up another notch. Mustangs by five, 22-17. Syme misses the three, rebound calls. Ponies gone cold here and allowed the Mustangs to open up a five point lead. Bay missed it, Welch with a rebound. First missed shot of the quarter five. Danielson, nice feed to Bartke and he'll go to the line. Stillwater has been doing an excellent job of penetration and finding the open man down low. That time Danielson got in the lane, got close to the lane at least, and found Barkey all alone, got fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line, take another look. Fouls on Nelson. His Nelson fouled him hard. Barkey, Barkey got the roll. And look at the emotion by Barkey there. Big bucket for the Ponies. Mustangs were on the verge of pulling away. They were up by five. He can pull it back within two if he can finish the three-point play. Barkey missed it. Chad Bay with another rebound. Ryan Kraft in for the first time for Stillwater. He gets picked by Bay, which frees Bagan. Birch again on the drive. He's fouled before the shot. Birch has shown an ability to drive past just about any of the Pony defenders. Really has. He has a tremendous first step, and he likes oh, to get in that Kraft. lane. That's his first personal. Foul against Kraft, his first. Birch brings it back into the front court. We've played just over three minutes, second quarter. Mustangs on top by three. Bagan backs it out. Sulak, entry pass, Bay, and Bay is fouled. I believe it will go against Bartke. Bay wants free throws, but they're going to call it on the floor. Foul against Bartke is his second, watch it again. Ball Reimer ball fouled ball him ball too, ball but Bartke got him first. Furch yeah. drives the baseline, hangs in the air, and gets the jumper to fall. Real athletic play there by Furch. Likes to, likes to go on that baseline. Eight points already for Furch. Danielson drives by Furch and hits the layup. Five for Danielson, a three-point lead for the Mustangs. Danielson has, has a lot of options off his game. He can shoot the three and go to the lane. Bay, Furch, Furch, Bartke with a rebound. Well, you can see how physically the Stillwater team goes after rebounds, and Kraft throws it away. 
Only the second turnover by the Ponies. Although it seems like they've had trouble with the Moundsview pressure defense just about every time up the floor. Jacobs for Sulak. Calls, passed up the three. Nice entry pass to Chad Bay. Chad Bay. Stillwater's got to find a way to prevent Bay from touching the ball. When he gets down that low, he's almost unstoppable. Mustangs shooting 77.8% here in the second period. Danielson off the glass. That's a tough shot. 15-foot bank shot is a very tough shot, and Danielson made it look easy. It's almost like a broken play in football, Mark. Seems like they can't get into their offense, yet Danielson finds a way to score. He has seven. Started slow, now heating up. Jacobs gets free on the blocks. Nice pump fake to get himself free. Jeff Jacobs. First two for Jeff, 28-23. And we have an official's timeout as Brett Bartke has a bloodied knee. And now we're going to have a brief delay here as Bartke gets the knee patched up. But there was a question a few moments ago about how many fouls Brett Bartke had. The scoreboard had put up two. The Ponies had checked with the scorer, and they originally told him there was only one. The winner here tonight advances to the Williams Arena Pavilion, where they will play in the Section 4 AA Final against the winner of the Coon Rapids Champlain Park game being played tonight at Anoka High School. The Rebels, obviously, in their first Section Final Four. And the Cardinals in it for the second time in three years. Rebound was last touched by Moundsview, so the Ponies get it back. That should be a real interesting game out at Anoka. Both teams match up fairly well against each other. Two minutes to go in the half. Mustangs by five. Syme hits the three. It's a two-point game. Nothing but the bottom of the net there for Syme. Kind of got an awkward shot, but Bagan for three. He hit it. Foul called against the Ponies. And the Mustangs will get the ball back after the three-point shot is good. Bagan's basket is good. The foul against three. Kraft was pushy-bound. This is a big swing, Mark. The Mustangs have a chance for a five-point play. This is a huge break for Moundsview. As you can see it right there. Now Zig calls out on the floor arguing. I think what he's arguing about is Mike calls got just floored by Nate Danielson. There was no calls right in front of the ref. And he's saying it should have been two fouls called. On the it's interesting the Ponies choose to match Danielson with Mike calls. Although with how many times they switch, doesn't really matter who you start out against. They're all about the same size in the 6'2 to 6'4 range. The coach Mutchler probably feels that all of his guys can match up fairly well. Kick by Reimer. Mustangs will keep it. Drummerhausen returns for Stillwater. It's a five-point Moundsview lead. They have a chance to go up by seven and complete what could be a five-point play after Kevin Symes' three had narrowed the marks back in for Moundsview. Reimer works against Bagan. Bagan just went up in the air and saw Bay was all alone. Nice pass by Bagan. Mustang switching into a zone. Thought they may. Away, Danielson got it back into the lane. Symes all alone, fires another three, but it's no good. Rebound, last touch by Furch. Sometimes and all five have gone to Stillwater. Danielson to Syme, 35 seconds. See if the Ponies want to slow it down and play for one. It appears the trail by seven. Danielson with a dangerous 
lackadaisical cross-court pass. Here's Drummerhausen, and he missed it. Rebound, Bay. Bonzi's going to have time to get one off here. Ten seconds. Cole in a good position to play for the final shot. Birch for Sulak, fires a three that's no good. Reimer with a rebound. And the first half comes to a close. We go back and forth, and the Mustangs will by seven. Section 4 AA semifinal action from Coon Rapids continues in a moment. America's most exciting television shopping is now on your cable system. For all your needs, wishes, and must-haves, Value Vision brings you quality with brand name products in a fun and convenient television shopping show. And as to the savings, well, you'll just have to tune in to see. So for that special gift, things you've always wanted, or just something to pamper yourself, tune in today and see why all across America's smart shoppers are coming home to Value Vision. There's something new cooking at Donatelli Supper Club. A lunch buffet with a homestyle quality you can enjoy every weekday. Look what you get for only $6.95. Buffet style. Taste the Donatelli difference any day of the week with good Italian-American food. Friday and Saturday, listen and dance to the music of the Ken and Betty duo. Donatelli's Highway 10 in Moundsview. Welcome back to Coon Rapids. Media sports coverage of the Section 4 AA semifinals continue. The Mustangs on top by seven at the break. And we're joined now by Anoka assistant coach Jeff Dowdy. And coach, first of all, your team saw these ponies on Saturday afternoon. And, and Stillwater really seems to be playing good basketball right now. I think you ran into a team at the wrong time. Yes, they are. They're starting to really play well. I think the uh, acquisition they made after Christmas was starting the bigger lineup seems to prevail for them. And they're doing a pretty good job this afternoon or tonight again. Uh, Coon Rapids or against uh, Moundsville. Your thoughts on the first half? Uh, Stillwater did just about everything right. They held onto the ball. They controlled the tempo. They only turned it over twice. Yet they're down by seven. Right. They uh, they got the tempo their way, but uh, I think they uh, the. Uh, um as far as Moundsview, they're shoot, they're uh, 10 for 13, I think you said, from the in the first half, and they're hitting their key, uh, key shots, and uh, they're getting the ball inside the bay, and, and Bay's starting to uh, starting to uh, open things up for them for the outside, and uh, it's been a pretty good basketball game, going back and forth, things like that, but uh, they're pretty well evenly matched. They played each other twice this year, and they know each other pretty well, so it's going to be an interesting second half. Now the Ponies obviously would like to play this a very physical style of basketball. Do you think they're doing enough of that inside with Chad Bay? I think they are. I think they're pretty pretty physical inside. They were really physical against us on Saturday, but uh, they're they're st uh, starting where they left off against us on Saturday, and I think uh, they're pretty physical with uh, Moundsview uh, running their uh, motion offense, and they're not letting uh, Moundsview do uh, get the ball easily inside the Bay. Everything Bay has gotten has been pretty hard, but uh, like I said. Chad Bay's a heck of a basketball player, and uh, if they need somebody to score, they're going to get him the basketball. You're in that Stillwater locker room right now. You're down by seven at halftime, yet you seem like you've played fairly well. What do you tell the guys? Just keep doing what you're doing, and, and uh, the shots will start to fall for them, and uh, maybe pick up the defense a little bit as far as shutting off the inside on Bay and making them shoot the ball from the outside because I think they're basically about the same size as everything, but Mouncey's shooting the ball pretty well right now, so you might want them to have them put it on the floor a little bit, and uh, Mouncey likes to put it on the floor and kick it back out and shoot the threes, but uh, if you can stop them from putting the ball on the floor and make them stand still and shoot the ball, it could be in Stillwater's favor. Now the Mustangs would like to force the tempo, play fast, cause turnovers. They only cost two in the first half. Is that a point of concern? Um, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, they got they keep got up-tempo. They've been playing up-tempo all year long. And I'll tell you, Stillwater doesn't look like a real finesse basketball team, but they sure take care of the basketball. They're really a good, aggressive basketball team, and they look to shoot the ball as quick as possible. But I'm a little surprised at the tempo of uh, Stillwater. They, they up-tempoed us a little bit 
uh, Saturday. But uh, I think if they uh, if they can uh, get uh, Syme on track and they get Welsh on track, I think it's going to be an interesting basketball game. What do you see happening here in the second half? I think uh, it's going to be a close basketball game. I think there's going to be some runs by Moundsu, and then there's going to be some runs by Stillwater. And I think if they get the ball inside the bay and they can start going inside out, I think Moundsu is going to come out on top. All right, well, thanks, Coach. Thanks for joining us here and lending your expert opinion at halftime. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Anoka assistant coach Jeff Dowdy. Stay with us. Section 4AA semifinal action continues in just a moment. Your local cable company and Domino's Pizza invite you to have it all. Enjoy the blockbuster hit The Firm on pay-per-view with a Domino's medium two-topping pizza and twisty bread for only $11.98. And when you order The Firm on pay-per-view in March, you're automatically entered in the Have It All sweepstakes with a chance to win a grand prize trip to the Cayman Islands. Watch your mail for this flyer or call Domino's at 835-3535 for the best pizza in town and The Firm $1.99 certificate. Some restrictions apply. Call your local cable company for complete details. Sweepstakes deadline is March 31st. Welcome back to Coon Rapids, second half action. We're just underway. The Ponies had the ball first, a missed shot, and a foul against the Mustangs on the rebound. And then Nate Danielson drills one off the glass, and it's 33-28 in favor of the Mustangs. With Mark Karonsky, I'm Anthony LaPanta. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. A berth in the section finals on the line. Well, Danielson picks up where he left off. Jacobs, and he's going to be... Awarded a foul as he drove inside. Pony switched to a zone to open the second half. Ball goes against Ken Reimer, his first. The winner here advances to the final. They'll meet the winner between Coon Rapids and Champlin Park. Cardinals leading that one by seven just before halftime. Jeff Jacobs with an offensive rebound and the putback. That was a big bucket for Mounds. He first misses the three. Jacobs picks up the rebound and puts it in for two. Mustangs hit 10 of 13 from the field in the second quarter. 35-28. Danielson from 15 again off the glass. He has 11. He loves the bank shot. Takes tremendous touch to use the bank shot. And it almost goes right hand in hand with his unorthodox style of play, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a good shot to master though. Backboard's definitely your friend. If you can learn how to use it, it's to your advantage. Sulak missed it, rebound Reimer. 35-30, Welch from the baseline, it's good. Big bucket there by Welch, Stein got it to Welch on the side. And he knocks down the big two. Three-point Mustang lead. They've led by as many as seven. Stillwater had to feel pretty good about where they were sitting after halftime. Sulak hands it off to Furch. Jacobs shovels it inside for Bay. Danielson goes to the floor. And now they tie up. We finally get a whistle. And the Mustangs will keep it. The reason I said that Stillwater had to be feeling pretty good about where they're sitting at halftime is because Mounds, you shot an incredible percentage there in the second quarter, and they were still in the game. A lot of times, Mounds, you would put teams out with a run like that, but Stillwater stuck Great right in there. The and now it's a three-point ball game. It's going to be a nice finish. I think both teams would have looked at the first half and seen some statistics like that, Mark. Talked a little bit with Coach Dowdy about the turnovers. Moundsview felt they had to force Stillwater to make mistakes tonight. Only two turnovers in the first half, yet they were still on top by seven at the break. Birch from 21. It is no good. A foul called against Welch away from the ball, and that is the call that Coach Zig calls was looking for in the first half. Maybe that. Maybe he got that call by... But yelling for the other one, I didn't see the play. Balls on Welch, that's his first personal, team second. Stillwater playing very physical still. Tipped and stolen by Welch. 
Mustangs turn it over for the third time. Just over five minutes to go, third quarter. Danielson, nice feed to Bartke, but he missed it. And a rebound for Jacobs, and he's fouled by Welch. Or is he? The foul is going to go against Jacobs. I don't know how Danielson got that pass through to Bartke. Incredible pass. Take another look at it here. But Bartke missed the layup. Danielson to Bartke. 4.45 remaining in the third. The rubber game between these two. Each team won on their home floor. This one's in a neutral site. Welch missed it. Bay with a rebound. This is where Malji was su successful in the first half, was getting it in Bagan's hands and getting it up the court quickly. Falls outside the arc. Bagan fires from 22 feet away and hits the three. John Bagan for three. Bagan's having a nice night behind the arc. He's hit three of four. Reimer answers with a two at the other end. And Reimer. That play again was created by Danielson penetration. Danielson tips it but can't save it. And he's selling popcorn to the guy in the fifth row. He does it all for the ponies. He really does. Very athletic. Peter Sulak, back in the game. Look how much business he got in the Moundsview section. <laughs> We're past the halfway point of the third quarter. And the Mustang lead is four, 38-34. Thing I've been impressed with was with Stillwater is they seem to answer every one of Moundsview's runs. They come back and hit a big bucket. Birch for three. It's no good. A rebound, Danielson. Mustangs not creating any second chances. They've only had four offensive rebounds all night, but here's Bagan with a steal. Gives it up to Birch for the layup. That time Danielson tried to do a little too much, tried to split Furch and Bagan at the same time. Bagan got the ball, unselfish play with the nice dish to Furch. 40-34, Syme for three. Missed it, rebound calls. And now the Mustangs have an opportunity to take their biggest lead. Bagan to Bay. Gets himself free, missed it, but got his own rebound and tipped it in. Bay does that so well. He'll miss that first one, and he'll go after it hard and get the second tip in. Timeout called by Coach Musler as the Mustangs have opened up an eight-point lead, 42-34. And the Ponies, who had been hanging in and hanging in and always seemed to get the big shot when they needed it, Looked like they had another chance with Simes three, but he didn't hit it this time, and Bay comes up with a big bucket at the other end. Well, it's hard to get, keep getting that big bucket every time you want it. The winner here will advance to Williams Pavilion, where they will meet the winner of the other semifinal between Coon Rapids and Champlin Park. You'll be able to see that game here on KABL Channel 52. And as we told you, the last score we have from Anoka High School was a seven-point Cardinal lead just before halftime. They're trying to complete the sweep against the Rebels. Beating them twice already this year. Two forty-seven to go in the third. Stillwater with the basketball out of the timeout. They could use a bucket right here. Mustangs into a zone. Haven't used as much of this as Coach Calls thought he may have to. Drummerhausen, Reimer. Pony's very patient. Danielson on the bench. He's their leading scorer with 11 tonight. Reimer to the baseline. 
Gets it inside for Welch, and he drew a foul, and will go to the line. He attempted one for the Ponies. Those are the only two foul shots attempted so far in what has been a very physical game. Welch knocks down the first one. Has eight, and it's a six-point lead. Two minutes to go in the third. Vega, nice feed for Thad Olsen, but he missed it. And the rebound for Syme. Kind of wonder how long Danielson's gonna be on the bench for. This may be his final rest of the evening. Reimer's double teamed. Finds Syme. Syme for Welch. Well, showing a new part of his game tonight. Very athletic move there by Welch. It's a four-point game. Furch into traffic is fouled before the shot. Chad Bay returns for the Mustangs. It's got to be encouraging for Stillwater to cut into this lead again without Danielson. Welch, Welch has really picked up his game. Side with a nice pass the there. Welch with 10 tonight, six here in the third quarter. Talked about him being a good spot-up shooter. The penetration, a new part of the game, and here's Sulak with his first three of the night, and it puts Mountview up by seven. Syme to Welch. There it is again. This guy's on fire right now, Welch. He's got their last six. 45-40, calls for three, missed it. A rebound, Bartke. Chance for the Ponies to creep back within two or three. 45 seconds to go. Bartke finds Drummerhausen, and Drummerhausen's fouled will go to the line. Pete Sulak picks up the foul. Coach calls, wants the foul called before the shot. He won't get his wish. First foul against Sulak. Drummer house into the line. Looking for his first point. Missed the first. Jeff Jacobs returns for the Mustangs. Danielson will check in. He'll replace Drummerhausen if he hits the second free throw. Drummerhausen missed them both. Offensive rebound by Bartke, but he missed it. Chad Bay comes away with it. It's a great chance for Stillwater there, and Bartke couldn't get the layup to go for him. Mustangs will play for one and try and take a seven-point lead into the fourth quarter. They make Nate Danielson return in the fourth quarter. Don't want to get him on the floor for any more in this third quarter. Mustangs have led ever since the Ponies maintained a 15-14 edge. Furch missed the short jumper. Offensive rebound by Sulek. Furch with a steal, but he missed it. And the Mustangs very nearly delivered a fatal blow just before the quarter ends. At the end of three, 47-40 in favor of the Mustangs. Section 4 AA semifinal action will continue in a moment. Gold Star is great entertainment. Gold Star is premium movies without the premium price. With a Gold Star package from Meredith Cable, you can take two premium movie services for only $11.90 per month. That's right, just $11.90 a month for any combination of HBO, Showtime, the Movie Channel, Cinemax, or the Disney Channel. Go for the gold. Go for the very best in movies, sports, and entertainment with a Gold Star package from Meredith Cable. Call 483-9999 today. Seven forty in favor of Moundsview after three. Pete Sulak with the offensive rebound. Off the miss by Furch, and then Furch nearly 
and delivered what may have been a knockout punch. Ponies through three quarters have still turned the ball over only four times. Brownsview on top by seven. Syme with it, Mustangs back in the zone. Danielson outside the arc. Missed the three, rebound Sulak. Pony shot the ball well in the third quarter. That was why they were able to hang in the game. As they hit six of 10 two-point field goal tries. Mustangs will slow the game down as much as they can. Just keep that clock rolling. They might make Stillwater come out and guard them man-to-man -man here. Bagan takes a long look. Reimer works against him. Mustangs are content to slow it to a crawl, but not if they turn it over. Fourth turnover by Moundsview, and the Ponies get another crack. Bartke. His pass tipped away by Jacobs. And the Ponies turn it over. Furch down the lane. Here's Bagan. Bagan, still watched by Reimer. Sulak to Furch. We're down to six minutes. The Mustangs have burned two minutes off the clock. Bagan with a long three that's no good. Rebound Welch. After all that, I'm not sure that's the shot that Zig Calls wanted to see. Welch will fire. He missed it short. Reimer with a rebound, and he's fouled by Jacobs. Reimer's had a knack for getting those big, re big offensive rebounds. He's put two back in for buckets, and now he'll go to the free throw line with the chance to put some more points on his total. Reimer with four offensive rebounds. Reimer will be shooting two. Reimer will go to the line for two. First by Reimer is good. The other semifinal is in the third quarter at Anoka, and the Cardinals on top 33 24. And of course, the winner there meets the winner here. The rebound, Chad Bay off the second miss. Mustangs have beaten both of those teams this year. Stillwater played Coon Rapids and lost by one here at Coon Rapids. Jacobs, entry pass for Bay. Bay is mauled by Nate Danielson. No shooting foul as of yet. Danielson picks up his second personal. Hard foul, they both exchange pleasantries and we're back to action. 47-41 in favor of the Mustangs. And now we'll get two free throws for Jeff Jacobs as he's fouled by Syme. Fouls on Syme, that's his first personal team. Jacobs to the line for the first time tonight, looking for point Jacobs number five. It's a heads up play by Jacobs, got behind the defender on the inbounds pass, no one picked him up. And Moundsview with a chance to open up an eight point lead that would equal their biggest of the game. Jacobs gets the roll, it's an eight point lead, 49-41. Furch with a steal, and the layup. And Coach Bustler wants a timeout on the pony bench. Will his team see it in time? Now they will get it. 5.09 remaining. And Moundsview on top by 10. Mark, we talked about the defensive pressure Moundsview would try and apply and the number of turnovers they thought they needed to force. They didn't force them all night, but they get two critical ones here early in the fourth quarter. 
while Mounsey's pressure is relentless. They keep they keep it on you the whole game, and if you don't create turnovers, and they'll tip their hat to you and say you guys did a good job, but they expect to get a lot of turnovers with their pressure defense. They have all season long. In the first meeting at Moundsview, the Mustangs forced 14 when they beat the Ponies by 22. But in the second meeting, they forced only seven and lost to Stillwater by one. Tonight, they forced six. But the keys that we talked about in the pregame, Mark, were the rebounding numbers. Stillwater had out-rebounded them by 13 when they beat them at Stillwater. And the rebounding edge tonight is very slim. The offensive boards are the key. Stillwater's had nine offensive rebounds. They had 14 and 17 in the first two meetings. I think the Mustangs are happy with their job they've done thus far defensively off the glass. Reimer into the front court. Five minutes to go. The Ponies have wanted to slow it down and make it a deliberate ball game. Will they be able to continue doing that and get back in this game? Danielson drills a long three. And he did it right in front of the Moundsview cheering Danielson session who was three. letting him know about the air ball he shot early on in the fourth quarter. Danielson now with 14 on the night. That air ball is his only miss of the second half. They're gonna need Danielson and Syme to start hitting some big outside three-point shots for him. Syme has been very quiet tonight, only five. Bagan. Works against Reimer. Hands it off to Bay. Near steal by Reimer. Sulak drives, lost it. Symes stripped it. Ponies into the front court. No need to hurry just yet. Just past the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Danielson gives it to Syme. Danielson for three, missed it short. Bay lost it. Reimer to Bartke, and it was tipped by Bay, so the Ponies will keep it. Mike Collins back in the game for the Another Bay. big offensive rebound for Stillwater. They haven't had as many as normal, but they certainly seem to come at crucial times. Well, they've been going to the offensive glass very hard. Here's Danielson driving the baseline, hangs in the air and missed it. Rebound, Jacobs. Nice move by Danielson. Didn't use the glass that time. I wasn't in a good angle for it. Sure, he would have liked to. But he could use the glass from just about any angle after we, the way he played the first three quarters tonight. Well, you're going to have to wonder how long Stillwater's going to go without following Moundsview here. Sliding in behind Danielson was Jeff Jacobs. He stepped in there and some ponies to run right through their pick. Well, Danielson ran through that one like a linebacker. Or I should say a defensive end since that's the position he played for the ponies. Balls. Runs into Reimer, draws a foul, and that will put the Mustangs in the bonus. So now we may start seeing that parade to the free throw line. Boundsview on top by seven. They've shot free throws very well, and they've shot them well against Stillwater in particular. 18 of 23 in the two games against the Ponies this year. Falls hits the first. He's an outstanding foul shooter. In fact, Michael has missed only two free throws all season. Jinxed him. How about three? 8 point lead. Just inside, three minutes to go. Reimer's alone, but he missed it. Rebound Bay. Furch to Calls. A blocking foul, and Calls with a chance to go to the line. That was a great job by Furch. 
got in the air, thought he was going to find Bagan. Ended up finding calls, and he got it, as you see right there. Calls on Barkley, that's his third personal basket count. Calls will be shooting one. Ponies want to take another timeout. 2.37 remaining. Stillwater has just one timeout. Barkey picks up his third. Coach Musler obviously feels like this is it. He doesn't stop this run right here and now. It doesn't matter how many timeouts he has down the stretch. Well, he's going to have to definitely probably put on a press here. Hope for a missed free throw by Cause. He jinxed him earlier. He's going to have to, maybe Welch have to step out and maybe hit a three or take a three. It seems like they've been passing the ball between Danielson and Simon on the perimeter. And they see, Monty seems to know pretty much that those are the guys that want to shoot the three and they haven't really looked at their other guys. The Mustangs have outscored the Ponies 11-4 since Stillwater closed within five at 45-40. They've outscored them 9-4 here in the fourth quarter. And they've opened it up a little bit to now lead by a dozen, 56-44. Ponies led the all-time series with Moundsview coming into play tonight. One of very few teams that hold edges against the Mustangs. 21-12 was the all-time edge, but they had won four of the last six postseason meetings. Calls misses another free throw. He had missed two all year. He's missed two in a row. Reimer for three. It may have been tipped. He missed it. Furch with a rebound. Calls, trapped, finds Furch. Dish to Bay, Mustangs will slow it down. Ponies are gonna have to foul. And Danielson grabs Bagan on the perimeter. That's four against Nate Danielson. Bagan will go to the line. Fouls on Danielson, that's his fourth personal. Bagan will be shooting one and one. The Mustangs trying to reach the section finals for the fourth time in five years. They had been three times in a row before last year, falling a point short against Donoka. Bagan missed it, rebound Bartke. Inside two minutes to go, Syme for three. That's no good. Offensive rebound by Danielson. Blocked by Furch, and Bagan grabs the rebound. Bay with the finish, and it's a 14-point lead. Reimer fouled by Bay. Chad Bay picks up the foul. Coach Zick calls and wants to make sure he stays out of trouble. That's saying it nicely. Reimer will go to the line and shoot two. Mounds you with their biggest lead of the night at 14 and everything going wrong for Stillwater here in the fourth quarter. One out of nine from the field and now one out of three from the free throw line. He missed it again, a rebound, Chad Bay. Minute and a half remaining. Furch. And he's fouled. You know, there's a foul away from the ball called against Bartke. That'll be four against Bartke. Furch will go to the line. And the Mustangs with a chance to put this one away at the foul line. However, as a team, they've struggled here in the fourth quarter, Furch just three of six. Furch missed it. Rebound, Welch. And the Mustang woes from the foul line continue. Stillwater, unfortunately, hasn't capitalized. Welch hits a three, and the lead is down John to 11. For three. Last touch by the Ponies. And the Mustangs get it back. 
Near turnover by Moundsview. Coach Musler has only one timeout remaining. And only a minute and three seconds with which to try and erase an 11 point lead. Sulak followed by Welch. And Sulak to the line. Sulak will be shooting one and one. Bonzi hasn't found a guy who can consistently knock down the free throws here tonight. Sulak's chance right now. Sulak hits the front end and he gets the bonus. Ends a string of four consecutive misses from the foul line for Moundsview. Sulak's second free throw is no good. Bartke with a rebound. Reimer fires a long three that's no good. Offensive rebound by Syme. Danielson hits a three. Danielson and it's 59-50. Danielson's played a great ball game here tonight. Continues to, start, continues to stroke the threes. It's going to be a little too late for his ponies. It's the last time out for Stillwater, just 43 seconds remaining, and the Mustangs can let a good part of this time run off the clock in between made baskets by Stillwater. It's going to be awfully difficult to erase a nine-point lead without a timeout. Coach calls his crew, apparently on their way to a section final despite some really lousy free throw shooting here in the fourth quarter. Well, that's got to be a concern for Coach Calls going into the next game. Is his free throw shooting down the stretch? They had some problems against White Bear down the stretch in the last game of the season. That's something you can't really teach. That's just going to the line and knocking them down. Mustangs will throw it in with just under 44 seconds remaining. 43.9. Sulak. Has it tipped away by Syme. Reimer grabs it. Reimer down the lane. Layup good and a foul. Reimer's basket is good. That's exactly what the Ponies needed. A chance to score with the clock stopped. And now Zig Calls will call a timeout. As the Mustangs do the two things they did not want to do. Number one, commit a turnover. And number two, foul a shooter. Foul goes against Sean Bagan. It's his second. And Reimer will try and complete a three-point play. One swing like this, and all of a sudden, there may be enough time for the ponies. Well, there might. It'd take a miracle, but we've seen stranger things happen. They're going to have to continue getting turnovers on the press, though. Coach Musler shouting instructions. His team in the final four for only the second time since their state tournament trip in 89. That was last year when they were beaten in that game here at Coon Rapids against White Bear Lake. Bears were the number one seed a year ago and it looks like this year they may fail again trying to topple the number one seed. They fought very hard here tonight. Both teams have played very hard. In their tourney run back in 89, they disposed of Moundsview along the way, beating them in the semifinals. Reimer hits the free throw, and the lead is six. With the three-point shot, that's only a two-possession lead. Reimer with a foul. Bagan will go to the line. Third against Reimer. Bagan's hit three of four threes tonight, or excuse me, three of five. But he is 0 for 1 from the line. Mark over at Anoka in the other semifinal. The Rebels starting to rally. It's a six-point Cardinal lead, 47-41. The winner here to meet the winner there in the final, which you'll be able to see on Channel 52. Bagan hits the first. That's a big one because it makes it a three-possession lead. But Coon Rapids trying to make it three straight wins against the Rebels this year. And on top by six in the fourth quarter. 
Fagan's second free throw is also good. It's an eight point lead. Syme into the front court. Ponies need to shoot quickly. Reimer for three. It's off no good. Rebound is tied up. Alternate possession to Moundsview. And this might be it, folks. Mustangs will throw it in. The Ponies won't call off the dogs just yet. But it's an eight point lead and calls is fouled in the backcourt by Reimer and will go to the line. That's four against Reimer. Fouls on Reimer is fourth personal. Calls at the line tonight, one of three, and I'll have to apologize for jinxing Michael. He came in 14 of 16, hit his first, mentioned he had only missed two, and he's missed two in a row. Hits that one. Calls at a couple of big threes during that torrid second quarter for Moundsview. And he's looking for his 11th of the night, but he missed it, rebound Reimer. Tipped away, but the Ponies get it back. A steal, calls with the layup. And the Mustangs are on their way to the section finals. Syme for three is no good. Danielson will get the game's final shot. And the Mustangs have defeated Stillwater. The final is 64-53. The Ponies rallied late, but the Mustangs withstand. And they advance to the section final for the fourth time in five years. Stay with us. Our post-game show is next. This is Section 4AA Basketball on KABL. Exactly where it's at. Come on, join the club. Home Shopping Club. No need to drive, no need to run for name brand bargains. We're number one, so come to where the shopping's fun. Come on, join the club. Join in is easy, fast and free. Just call to buy the things you see that come with a money back guarantee. So come on, join the club. Around the clock, this is your store. With bargains, fun, and so much more. In just 10 days, they're at your door. So come on, join the club. Home Shopping Club. advance to the section 4AA final for the fourth time in the last five years as they beat the Ponies tonight 64-53. Welcome back to Coon Rapids. I'm joined by Zig Calls and Eric Birch. And Eric, let's start with you. You came into this game thinking that you would be able to pressure them defensively into some turnovers that you really weren't able to do that, but yet you still come out on top. Yeah, we tried to push them to the left hand because we felt they weren't as well with the ball with the left hand. And, and they, uh, to their credit, they kept their composure and handled the pressure well. We tried to tried to give a more pressure than applied to the dribblers, to the ball handlers, but we couldn't cause the turnovers tonight. You were a part of an outstanding shooting performance by your team in that, particularly in the second quarter where your team hit 10 out of 13. It just seemed like you guys couldn't miss. Yeah, Michael uh, Calls and Sean Bagan both hit a couple big threes for us, and, and that really lifted our team up. We spent a lot of time in shoot, on shooting in practice and it seemed to pay off in a game like this. This win a little bit sweeter because of the fact they had beaten you the last time around? Oh, it definitely is. Uh, this is sweet revenge. I saw a sign up there, revenge is sweet, and it sure is. And now you advance to a section final. You'll see a team that you've seen before either way, either Coon Rapids or Champlain Park. Any thoughts on the final? Yeah, it'll be a much tougher game this time. Uh, we handled Coon Rapids pretty well at our place, and Champlain we had a little difficulty with. But it'll be a, it'll be a very close game either way. All right, Eric, thanks a lot. Good luck on Friday. Thank you very much. Eric Furch, part of the team that won it, and Coach Zig calls on your way to the section finals again. And this was a game I know you were concerned about because of how physical the Ponies were, and they played a physical style tonight, and your team came out on top. Yeah, we, we were worried. Uh, they out rebounded us by a pretty good margin at Stillwater, and uh, uh, it was very important for us to be able to compete on the boards with us in case we didn't hit. Fortunately, in the second period, we did hit some shots, and uh, although we 
we mentioned earlier that uh, we didn't create a lot of turnovers. There was a one little spurt uh, in the fourth quarter, I believe, that we got turnover, turnover, and we got it up to 12, and that was ultimately the difference. So we're we're very happy to win. We knew that Stillwater was a good team at this time of the year, and uh, we've been watching them very closely. They got some great efforts for some great players tonight. Nate Danielson had a very strong night. Uh, Nate Danielson and, and Welsh also had a good game. Uh, I thought that Stillwater played extremely well. Uh, we, we thought we could create numerous turnovers by overplaying them to their weak hands, and they had enough burst of speed to beat our guys a couple times, and then uh, when they did pass off, some of their guys hit nice shots, and uh, that's a credit to Dwayne Mutchler and, and, and his team. Uh, Dwayne's a good coach, and, and when he gets uh, kids in the right frame of mind and gets them in the right spots, they don't make turnovers, and um, they didn't tonight. It was a tough game. Your team, although they didn't force the number of turnovers you thought, I think they shot the ball perhaps as well as you could have expected. Yes, we, we had some tough threes. I, I, was, I was pleased with the way that our kids played. There was a lot of uh, nice pressure on them at this time of the year, and uh, they hung tough and hung tough, uh, missed a few three, free throws again at the end of the game. Uh, we'd like to see all of those go in, but the advantage was ours at that point. Uh, I was a little worried when they stuck in a couple of threes, but... We're going to stay in our zone, make them kill with some more clock. A couple of big threes your team hit that seemed like shots. You're running the offense for a while. All of a sudden, someone pulls one from 22 feet away. and It's a bad shot if they miss, but it's a good shot when they go in. But it, it seemed like it wasn't exactly coming from the flow of the offense. Well, I think they, they, they did a lot to shut us down. Uh, they backed off of Sean a lot. At the top, they flatten out their zone, and they're big across the top. See, nobody under 6'3". So, you know, once in a while, you have to take that shot to loosen them up and I don't know if they would have or wouldn't have you know it's hard to say what they were told they probably said well make them beat us from uh, from the outside and well we hit a few do you think the fact that your team lost to the ponies the second time around helped your players get ready mentally tonight oh absolutely if if we had beaten them twice our kids would not understand how Stillwater could play this well in this game we I, I think I think it's probably the reason we won and now looking ahead in the final, I asked Eric about it. It's a team you've seen before either way. Coon Rapids a team that I think you caught on about their worst night of the season and really blew them out. Champlain Park played very well against you, and yet it still wasn't well enough to win. Do you have any thoughts looking ahead at those two teams? Well, they're both going to be pretty good at this time of the year. I think Coon Rapids might be more of a team in terms of they've had the same set of people doing, going through some losses, working their way back. And I think their chemistry might be a little bit better. On the other hand, Champlain Park has just got a wealth of physical talent. All these transfers that are coming in uh, uh, eligible at semester time, now they know each other's names, and that makes them tougher right away. Well, it should be an interesting one on Friday night either way, but we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on reaching another final. Well, thank you, Anthony. We're, we're happy to be at this point, and, of course, the biggest game is yet to come. That's Coach Zig Calls. His team wins tonight and advances to the final. And remember, you can see that final here on Channel 52. That's going to do it for us tonight here in the semifinals. Hope you enjoyed the ball game For Mark Karonsky and the rest of the KABL sports crew, I'm Anthony Lopanta saying so long from Coon Rapids.